Good afternoon, everybody, and a big welcome to Google Digital Garage this afternoon for our upcoming session on Build a CV and Write a Cover Letter. It's an absolute pleasure to be here with you this afternoon uh, for this session and a uh, great 60 minutes ahead. So I hope you've got pen and paper uh, ready or a note-taking device of choice. So my name is Glenn uh, and I am a trainer for Google's free skills training program, Google Digital Garage. So I'm a pretty experienced uh, digital skills coach and I've got quite an extensive background in management and consulting. So I have uh, managed uh, quite a few members of uh, staff and been through quite a number of CVs and cover letters in my time. So I'm hoping that I can really add some value to this session for you as we work through. Now, I'm not on my own this afternoon. Uh, Google Digital Garage is always a team effort, and you will find in the chat, in the YouTube chat, the wonderful Sam or Samantha. There she is, Samantha Moderator. You can see her there with the little blue spanner just by the side of her name. So Sam's going to be in the chat with you for the duration of the session. She's a very experienced Google Digital Garage coach herself. So comment say hello pop in say hello there we go i can see quite a few of you doing that already uh good afternoon and hoping for a productive session absolutely we are going to be trying for that productive session for you dnd now talk to sam say hello introduce yourselves let us know why you're here let us know what stage you're at are you building your first cv today are you updating a current cv let us know what's going on with you uh, and for you it really helps to uh, interact and for us to really build these sessions uh, productively has been requested there uh, for you so please do say hello now before we do get going if you're having any difficulties with the picture or the sounds this afternoon then please do just refresh your browser it's that age-old adage i think in tech really if it's not working close it down reopen it and it should be okay uh, that does seem to clear up most of the problems that we experience and then you'll better get the most out of the session today now i did mention about you talking and saying hello in the chat if you can't see the chat function, you may just need to sign into your YouTube account. Uh, if you don't have a YouTube account, why not sign up for one? There's just a few clicks, a little bit of information, and then you've got a, a wealth of information at your fingertips. And one of the advantages, if you do have a YouTube account, is that for anything that you do watch, if you get uh, disrupted or interrupted halfway through, you'll find the history uh, function in the dashboard on the left in YouTube, and then you can just re-pick up and watch the session again, should you need to. Just on that, this session will remain live for the next 24 hours or so. So if you do need to revisit any areas, there is a lot of information, um, then please feel free to do that on the link that you came in with. Now, we are running this virtual training as part of a much broader offering from Google Digital Garage, which you'll find on the Google Digital Garage website. That's g.co forward slash digital garage. So have a look, um, bookmark that as well. There's lots of webinars just like this one on lots of topics to do with your career, your business, or again, your personal progression, as we can see here in terms of the CV and cover letter. There's also some excellent courses. Uh, the one that stands out for me and one which, you know, we're all marketing ourselves. The CV and write a cover letter is your ultimate marketing document as we're going to be working through shortly. There's a great course on the Google Digital Garage site called The Fundamentals of Digital Marketing, which again will give you a good step forward in your knowledge and help you really make the most of your online presence too. So please do take a look at that and sign up for it should you wish to do so. We'd love to see you there and we'd love to see you at more of these webinars. So that's g.co forward slash digital garage. Okay, so that's the uh, general housekeeping done. I hope everyone's comfortable. hope everyone's ready to go. We're going to get started with building a CV and writing a cover letter. Uh, we know that writing a cover letter, writing CVs can sometimes cause those kind of mental blocks and that it can be one of those sources of pressure. So we're going to try and make this uh, as easy as we possibly can for you, as logical with some great tips as we work through. Now, as I've mentioned, we've uh, worked with CVs and cover letters for a long time. So hopefully we can really start to give you a, a heads up on the best things to include and the logic behind that too. So let's actually have a look at that now, what we're gonna do. So in the three sections that we've got for you this afternoon, we're gonna firstly be looking at building the CV, which we're gonna be using the information that we're gonna be collecting uh, in the first section as we run through. Then we're gonna be looking through some approaches to putting that information into the CV. 
making sure it's really strong and positive for any potential employees or recruiters that you're talking to. Then we're going to be looking at writing a cover letter. A cover letter is a key ingredient now to a job application more and more as time goes on. So we want to use a cover letter to further your experiences, your explanations, uh, and to outline those brilliant skills, strengths, and goals. Then in the third session or a uh, third part of this session this afternoon, we're going to be looking at getting ready for your job search, the options that are available to you, uh, taking into account some of the market trends. And we'll talk through some ways of identifying and setting your career goals. So welcome along. Now, before we get there, there is one more service I'd just like to bring to your attention. Now, career certificates are available from Google. These are job ready skills, job ready courses. So have a look at the Google career certificates at gwo.gle forward slash career cert UK and uh, Snapchat will drop that link for you in the chat. There's some really good courses in there on UX design, on data analytics, digital marketing is a reasonably re, uh, recent addition in there too. Lots of things that are gonna give you skills that a lot of employers are really, really looking for at the moment. So please do go along and see if that might be suitable for you. Make sure you're eligible, go in and enjoy if you do take those up. There's projects uh, management, there's IT support. So have a look at some of those courses. They will be uh, no cost to you uh, if you meet the uh, eligibility criteria. Okay, so let's move along and let's now have a quick look what, about what your career aspirations might well be at the moment. I asked you just to let us know why you're here, uh, what, whether you're building your first CV, whether you're updating your current CV. So what are your career aspirations? What are you actually working towards? We'd love to know. Again, let's get the community going in the chat. Let's understand each other and really start to build up a rapport. So let us know that, drop that into the chat. I'll try and pick up a few of those as we go. And a massive hello to everybody. I can see a lot of you have said hello in the chat this afternoon. That's fantastic. Thank you. It's really great when people do interact. It makes it a lot more fun as well because I can't see you. You might better see me, but I can't see you. So let's move into the first section now. And that's actually have a look at building our CV, as we said. You know, we're going to be showing you a useful templated approach, but it's not the only way that you can create a CV. Uh, you might need to be flexible, you know, when you're starting to prepare in how you present yourself. And that will come down to the industry, the sector, and even down to the role that you're applying for as well. You know, some jobs might want a longer, more detailed CV. Some companies, such as startups, might want a one page. So, it's always really, really important, and we'll say this a couple of times throughout the session, to look at the job description. That might sound obvious, but some of us do skip past that. Look at everything in detail, because the company or the organization that you're applying for can often drop some very subtle but very important things into the job description to see if you can follow instructions from the word go. And that can actually affect your application if you don't notice it. So read through that job description in detail and follow all of the guidelines and supply all of the information that you've been asked for. OK, so here's one for you uh, for the chat as well. So what's the primary purpose of a CV? This would be interesting. Uh, please do pop that into the chat. So what is the primary purpose of a CV? I'll give it a couple of seconds just to allow you to get a couple of answers in. Uh, there we go uh, to market yourself. That's a good answer. That is a really, really nice answer to market yourself. Uh, you know, we are essentially, now we're online, we are our own brand as well. You know, everything that we do reflects us and thus we build our own personal brands. CVs are part of that branding exercise. I think that's self-branding exercise. So yep, to market yourself is a fantastic answer. So the curriculum vitae or the resume, if you're tuning in from other countries, absolutely, uh, you might recognize the word uh, resume rather than curriculum vitae or cv so they're interchangeable terms they both do mean the same thing now a cv is going to reflect your life's experience and not just just the jobs that you've had so i think that's a very nice romantic outline that we've got on the screen there to set you up very positively it's the course of your life uh think about that it's the course of your life you know applying for jobs you want the employer and the recruiter to see the real you to feel like they are getting to know you very conclusively and very quickly uh, in a lot of cases. So think about the information about you, the, your skills, your strengths that show you in the most positive and appealing light. 
So this is your first contact with employers. It's going to include the three um, overviews that we've got on the screen there, the summary of your experience. It does need to be goal oriented. You know, people want to see some dynamism, some, some actions, some doing words and some doing phrases. And it needs to be very importantly, authentic and honest. It really does need to be authentic and honest. Don't get caught out at that interview stage because 2% maybe of candidates are gonna to get to that interview stage. So don't embellish your CV show everything you've done in the positive way that it was done for the experience that it gave you for everything that you've benefited from that experience too that will shine through in you that will shine through in your personality as well so okay summary of your experience goal oriented uh, authentic and honest these are key elements for that first contact with employers and remember those employers those recruiters the people looking for your cv and i can talk from personal experience here are often really really busy so that information needs to be to hand and very clearly laid out very important tip there so what information are we going to include within a cv so we're going to overview this for you these are the again some cvs some roles may need other things but these are the key elements that you're going to require for pretty much most roles. Your basic information, of course, your name, um, your contact details. Contact details are key. Your opening, opening summary, uh, which you can see in red there, about you. Your work experience, so what you've done in the past, the things that you feel will help the employer see that you are the one for this new role. Your education and achievements, which help back up what you've done in the past, um, the courses that you've taken, the effort that you've put in to that particular perhaps industry or sector, and your skills and strengths. It's really nice for people to be able to say, I'm pretty good at doing this, this, and this. You know, one of the difficult things for quite a lot of people really in terms of CVs is, you know, people say, oh, I find it really hard to sell myself or to shout about myself. Your CV is the place to do that genuinely and authentically to let people know what it is that you can do. Now, most CVs are going to be about two pages in length. So tailor it specifically to the job you're applying for. That's something we'll repeat a couple of times through this session too. Please do tailor every CV um, for every role that you apply for. There's really, it's not great practice to send the same CV out to lots and lots of different roles because lots and lots of different roles are going to have different descriptions, different needs and different skills, etc. that they might be asking for. So tailor your CV accordingly. Now, basic information is going to include our name, our address or location. So I will have my name on my CV, uh, the region that I'm in. You don't need to go into your home address. Your contact information so people can get in touch with you they might be interested by you because of your cv so give them the opportunity to contact you easily and quickly at the top um, and any other important information that you feel would be relevant to the role and really the other important information is things that you feel would be relevant to the role could be um, a role that in involves driving so you can say you've got a full driving license you know, you don't have to put your age or your date of birth on there. This is entirely your choice to do so. There's no hard and fast rule at all with that. If you feel it is appropriate to do so, then you can make that decision yourself. Now, your opening summary is made up of two to three sentences. So we've got our basic information. The they know our name, they know how to contact us now. Now the summary, again, you make this hard hitting. Think about when you read a newspaper um, or when you're reading uh, perhaps a post on social media, you want to be to have a really good headline, something that really catches your eye, stops you in your tracks. Your CV is kind of working to the same remit there. So it's made up of two to three sentences that describe who you are and what you can do for an employer. It works as something which is called an elevator pitch. Elevator pitch, if you're unsure of how to construct one of those, although we're gonna run through a couple of examples here, there are some good examples online too. So again, go to the search, your search engine of choice and type in elevator pitch, and you should get some great examples, often from a lot of the recruitment sites um, that you know in the UK that I can think of, most of them will have a section on helping you to get the job that they're advertising. Briefly describe yourself, give people a feel for you, present your motivation, um, 
for applying for the role. Why are you doing this? People, you know, employers want to know that you're keen on the actual job that is being sold uh, and that is being advertised. You know, it's not going to be great just to say, I just need a job. You have to be creative. You have to think about it. You have to look at the passion that you have for the role that you're applying for and try and put that into words as well. Now, if you haven't got a massive amount of experience, then you might want to highlight your skills and your education in your summary. So again, if you've not had many roles before, that shouldn't be too much of a problem as long as you're able to demonstrate what you've been doing that's going to help you get the job that you're going for. It could be unpaid work experience. There could be volunteer roles um, and also just what you're working towards, your overall career goals and ambitions. And of course, any courses that you're going for too. Now, your work experience, it's called reverse chronological order. So that is the most recent role that you're performing at the top. Again, it's it's helping the recruiter just to see what they're doing now. And it helps you piece together. So they want to jump from that role into this role. You know, have they exhausted their time in that previous role? Are they looking for a step up? It helps put together pieces of the jigsaw for the recruiter. Now, you do want to include the company job title and dates the key projects and results that you've been working through, the things that you've achieved. You don't wanna spend too much time describing the obvious parts of your job because they're not that useful to the recruiter. Everyone knows to a certain degree really what a, a particular role will have as a basic function. It's the things that you specifically did and how you did them um, and how you perhaps improved them, made changes. You know, it's your focus within the role that you've been in. So focus on uh, what you actually achieved while you were doing the roles, the enjoyment that you got, you know, the improvements. As I say, think about benefits, improvements all the way through. Now, include interests that match the requirements of the job and also any um interests that kind of really do reflect you in a very positive manner. You know, you might have worked in a volunteer sector. That's great for employers to see, great for recruiters to see, because they can understand that you're a very motivated person, that you will take time out of your own personal life in order to pursue the things that are important to you. Then we want to work towards, as we've seen from our uh, list previously, uh, to look at our education and our achievements. So we're going to have the most recent, again, at the top, always working in that reverse chronological way. We're going to think about any academic qualifications that we have, any professional qualifications that we've taken along the way, and any key projects and research that we've undertaken. Now, always think about, too, if the previous role that you've been in did some in-house courses, for example, and that happens a lot. You get introductory courses, health and safety courses sometimes, first aid at work courses sometimes. Um, customer service courses, include all of those too, because even if they're not through um, a particular body, a particular um, qualification body, they could be really, really useful to show that you have um, been demonstrated and too, in terms of some of these courses and how you can work really, really efficiently based on what you've already achieved. Okay, now skills and strengths are really, really important. Why are they really, really important? Because they help you to stand out there. They can, in a lot of respects, almost be like your USP, your unique selling point. So what qualities would people describe you as having? It is quite difficult at times for us to outline, as I've mentioned, our own strengths and our own skills. So if you're a bit stuck, talk to a family member or a friend or an ex-colleague. Think about the things that you're good at. So the qualities that people would describe you. He's really friendly. He's really helpful. Um, he's really um, analytical. Think about all of the things that just come up on a day to day basis that people might describe you. Those could be some of the qualities you think. Actually, I never really saw that in myself because I was just doing my job. You'll hear that a lot. I was just doing my job. But pick out the things that have made your days previously very successful or enjoyable. Now, once we've covered some of those qualities and started to put them into a nice positive sentence, what soft and technical skills do you have? So, you know, you learn skills through being taught um, or through your experience, like handling money or being fluent in a language, for example, or being good at software, things like Word, Excel or Photoshop, that sort of thing. But your strengths, these are natural strengths that you are often born with uh, and they have positive 
qualities, which again, you kind of develop and build on over time throughout your life. So your strengths on a CV could include things like I'm really organized because look, you know, I'm really good in the mornings. I get myself organized. I'm a self starter. I know where to begin. I don't need too much help in terms of getting started or you've got good communication skills. That is a strength which is really really important for a lot of roles good communication skills is going to be great for those customer service roles or serving customers undertaking reception work or anything where you do need to communicate effectively with others so your skills and strengths fit smoothly in the skills and strengths section of your cv you know doing them like bullet points is really really useful because that does make it easier for employers to read you can give examples of where you've displayed some of your skills um, as well as the way in which some of these skills and strengths that you have are actually going to link to the job it's really good to say and i can use that skill because in your job description you asked for me to do whatever duty it is i think the skill that i have here or my experience here would contribute really well towards that now as we've mentioned there, talk to other people to get a feel for how people are perceiving you from the outside. Try and be as objective as you, as you can. It's really, sometimes you're writing that CV, it's that blank piece of paper and you think, oh, where do I start and how do I describe myself? So talking to other people can be a really useful way to get you past that initial kind of, kind of mental difficulty, that reluctance. So let's showcase our skills. So let's have a look. Now we're looking on the screen there at soft skills, hard skills, and digital skills. So soft skills, such as leadership, you might just be good. Um, you might be a bit bossy. I mean, I've managed loads of places. So I've been told at times I'm a little bit bossy, but you just might have that natural organization for people, understand what other people's strengths are, their empathy, and just think, okay, you could do that. You could work really well here and you can bring the best out of people. So you could be a great leader. You could be really good at teamwork, working in a team, interacting with all types of people from all types of backgrounds in order to get the job done to achieve that common requirement. Uh, and you could be really great, as we've said, at communication. You might enjoy talking, you might enjoy outlining, explaining, fixing problems, giving solutions. Now, hard skills, as we've mentioned, could be speaking another language. It could be accounting. You know, hard skills can be developed in most situations. You might want to learn more about word processing or the, the many, many um, areas that are available online now in terms of uh, you might be a designer, so you might like using online graphic design tools, that sort of thing. Think about the skills that you've learned and the things that you have a flair for. Now, also really, really key and something that I've alluded to in terms of perhaps us building our personal brand online and how we are working greatly online now are the digital skills that are available. And the digital skills, again, that we may well have picked up through um, being at home on our computer via a hobby. Uh, we might be looking at doing courses to understand particular software packages or just to understand even our operating system on our PC better. You know, there are things like coding, video editing, social media. It would be really, really interesting uh, just to see how many people would be interested in working in something like social media. I imagine it's quite a lot. I imagine that there's uh, quite a pull there because, again, if you're a social um, platform lover and you are very strong in communication, maybe these are things that you can start to work and develop on, again, which are going to really help you to um, show yourself in an entirely different light. So think about digital skills. You know, the, even the government has been through and laid out its essential digital skills. We do need the ability to access, handle and store information, to communicate online, to transact with businesses, to solve problems with technology uh, and stay safe and legal online as well. So as the online world has grown, there is more and more for us to do. OK, some example skills that you might want to include in your CV are included on the screen now. So again, take some notes, uh, take a screenshot of the screen if that helps as well. You might be really strong at teamwork or product management. You could be good at presentations, leadership skills. You might be great at networking, getting other people uh, to understand what you're about and what you're uh, trying to achieve. You could be good at coding and programming. You could be good at graphic design. So have a look at some of those skills, see if they apply to you. Now let's have a look at defining our strengths. 
So we've broken this down into three areas. So what is it that you're good at? Think about things that you're good at. What is it that you like doing, you know? Try and now put that jigsaw together for yourself. What you're good at, what you like doing, and also what makes you stand out as well. Think about any achievements that you've had, any of those moments where you think, oh, I did some really good work there. I've solved a problem. How did you do that? Now, also looking at some great words to use to describe yourself. Again, keeping everything really positive. You could be enthusiastic. You could be diligent. You could be a team player. You could enjoy helping people. You could be self-motivated. You could be solution focused. You know, every role has um, challenges that need to be solved. You could be driven, passionate, caring, dynamic. Think about some of those great words to describe yourself and then build your strengths and skills around them. Show how these would apply to you and how they'd apply to the role that you're actually going for. Okay, so example strengths. As I've just mentioned there, there's some on the screen. So again, feel free to take some notes of those. Adaptable, uh, passionate. Passionate's great, like I really care about what I'm doing. I'm caring, I'm analytical, I'm driven. Some really strong words. Think about making sure you're using strong words when you're describing yourself. I'm dependable, really important too. Now, showcasing your experience. Uh, we want to be able to show what we've done, show how we've done it, show why it's important to us, as I've mentioned a couple of times. So what does constitute experience? It doesn't all have to be down to roles or jobs. It could be internships. It could be any work experience that you've taken. And <clears throat> again, speaking for the UK, quite often at school or college, you get the opportunity to go and sit in or work with an employer for a couple of weeks to get some work experience. That can be crucial too. Part-time jobs, volunteering roles that you might have undertaken, any certificates and achievements that you've also uh, taken over time, make sure you include those. And again, it helps to show that you are continuing to improve. It's called continuous uh, improvement, continuous development. Hobbies and extracurricular activities. Now, there might be things that you do in your spare time that could actually really contribute strongly towards the role you're going for. Because if your hobby or your any activity you take demonstrates your potential, that's a transferable skill that you can take over to the workplace as well. That's really, really key too. Don't separate the two. Everything you do makes you you, and some of the skills that you've learned over time could be great in the workplace as well. So reflect upon your experience. What did you do? What did you achieve? And how does this relate to the role? Really, really key areas there. Always keep things relevant when you're thinking about how to fill those two pages. Now, formatting is a question that comes up fairly often. So let's have a look at these. There's two examples on the screen there for you. There's no set structure, uh, as we've said. And again, it could be based on the things that you would like to accentuate or to highlight the most. So you can see on the example on the right that there's a great deal of room for experience there. Uh, whereas the example on the left actually highlights more of the key skills that that individual has with just a slightly smaller box for experience. You know, with um, education has been put on the on the right hand side uh, there, again, which reflects whether you've been to school, to college, to university. Think about how you best want to reflect those things. Both have got a, a good and pretty even size opening summary there. Think about how you would like your CV to be read. Look at it yourself. Give other people um, that you trust a look at it perhaps before and say, does this catch your eye? Does it show the information that I want? This is the job that I'm going for. You know, promote the content that you want to draw attention to and then check that the attention is actually being drawn to those particular areas. Okay, now I need to ask you a question, which of these, based on everything that we've done and everything we've covered so far, which of these would you feel would be the most effective CV? I'm going to just give you a few seconds to uh, put your answers in. So what, which one of these do you feel is the best, based on the principles, the best practice that we're talking about, which one would you prefer to land on your desk if you were a hiring manager or a recruiter? I'd be really, really interested to know. There is a, a clear winner, if you like, here. One, uh, there's lots of ones coming through. Yes. Okay, why? 
Why is that? Yes, you're absolutely right. Because, okay, it's clean. It looks professional. That's important. Uh, it's an easy to read format. Easy to read is very, very key. It has clear sections. And also just in terms of general presentation, black text on white is easier to read. Uh, Natalia Romanova, you've put one is more visual. Yeah, it is for all of the reasons we've outlined there. For a line manager or a recruiter in a hurry, the information that they need is going to be pretty easy to pick out. Uh, Janelle Alembu, easy to read. Yes, clean and easy to read. Absolutely. Uh, interesting question, Tony, Anna. But will recruiters software read it properly? <laughs> that's a really great question because, of course, yes, CVs do go through filtering uh, machines. Now, that's more about keywords. That's more about ensuring that your. that's why job descriptions are so important. This is a great question. Thank you, Tony. Is that often CVs will be run through a filtering process before they hit a human now. And what that really means is that the words that are used in the job description, you need to get some of those into your CV so that the scanner, the machine that is being that is filtering, will pick up those and say, ah, they're mentoring these so they do have the right skills uh, for the job. So that is something that is important to note. And yeah, great question, Tony. Thanks for that. Okay, let's move on from those examples. I think you get uh, the understanding there. I can see that you can understand what's important to the recruiter. And again, put yourself in the recru recruiter's position. Which of those would you rather get? I would rather not have number two because it doesn't really tell me much. It's just a, this is what happened in my life, but it doesn't back it up anywhere. It doesn't give me any sense of Harry and, hey, I'm Harry. Again, would you like to get that type of CV through depending on the type of role that you're hiring for? In a lot of cases, the answer probably is going to be no. Okay, so we want to maximize our impact. So you've seen the previous example. That's going to help you to maximize your impact by setting things out, by it being clean, by being very readable, by having the sections very well and easily defined. So as a next step, you need to write in a clear and concise manner. You know, you're not going to write your CV in one go, I would imagine. I mean, it's a very hard thing to do. If you do, you need to write it perhaps as a draft, have a break, go back to it, and think, oh, does that sentence sound better if I would put those words the other way around? Do some editing. Be transparent about the gaps in your CV. You may well have had a career gap. You may well um, have had a family gap. There are many reasons why people have gaps. Recruiters will find those gaps. So again, have an explanation ready. Be clear and transparent about them. It doesn't make you any less suitable for a role. Your answers will help keep you suitable by giving a clear description of what went on uh, and get a second and third opinion. As we've said, get people to read it, get people to look at it, get people to give you some constructive criticism about your CV when you're ready to send. So think about also your spelling, your grammar and the layout. Now there is a great tool if you're not if you're not feeling if you're feeling less than confident about grammar and spelling, use a tool like Grammarly. You can actually put your any body of text into Grammarly. Uh, and again, perhaps um, Samantha could put a link in for me. Grammarly will then check that for spelling and grammatical corrections, and it will help you. So if, if one of your considerations or fears is that you, you don't feel that you're a great writer, use a tool like Grammarly to help you to present things in the best possible way. Right, we're going to move into the first uh, pause for questions. I'm just going to have a quick look through uh, and see what's come in. Can you explain more about, and this is from Janelle, hi, uh, thanks very much for your question. So can you explain more about briefly describe yourself? Yeah, briefly describe yourself. Uh, know what the job needs and describe yourself in a way that is going to make you appealing to that recruiter and appealing for to fill that job role. Be honest and give the recruiter something to think about so they can start to build a picture of you. And I hope that helps, Janelle. And Natalia, do the courses have to be supported by certificates? Um, they, in some cases, they may well re require or further request certificates. But if you don't have them, or if the course was just a general course that didn't have a certificate, it's still going to be valid as long as you're able to explain what you did in that course and perhaps the benefits that it brought to you. And then further to that, how you can make those benefits fit into the role that you're applying for. So Nat Natalia, I hope that works for you. Uh, Gregor Suter, uh, how important is it to back up skills and strengths with examples in the CV? Yeah, okay. So you don't have to necessarily put examples for every skill and strength that you've got. What you do need to be able to do is to be able to 
or be ready to explain those skills and strengths with relevant examples. Um, if you get the, to the interview stage, you don't want to, you need to give yourself something to speak about. So it's a balance really of outlining skills and strengths, maybe giving a small example of some of them that you find are more relevant to the role to get you through the door in the first place. But then everything you put in the CV, be prepared to be asked a question about it. I know that when I interview people, whatever claims people make, I will find them and I will pick them up and I will always ask them for an example. So just be prepared that everything you write in the CV, you could be asked about. Okay, now uh, we've got uh, Sheikha Ahmad Sisay. Hope I pronounced your name right. Welcome along this afternoon. So what are some of the errors most uh, that most young people make uh, when preparing their CV? I would actually just say that <laughs> It's that thing about tailoring it really and not doing one for every job that you go for. You need to make changes. It's almost like you could build a big sort of central bank CV with all of your information in it from all of the experience that you've had. And then for the jobs that you're going for, why not pick out the information that applies to the job that you're going for and tailor that CV each time? I would say um, that that would be one of the big mistakes. Also, perhaps as we saw with those examples on the one and two don't be too informal i know that perhaps um, we might be writing slightly less formally now in terms of social media and um, other forms of media online but you have to maintain a level of professionalism whilst also obviously giving the employer the best of you and a bit of your personality so you need to balance things out and make sure again that you're thinking about the role you're going for and think how would that how do how does that job expect me to speak? Because that will be crucial too. So thank you so much, everybody, for your questions. Some really good questions there. And keep them coming because we will have another pause for questions. I've still got a lot um, that I need to get through uh, this afternoon. So I am going to move into the next section now so that I can give you uh, the best information that I possibly can. And I've just moved my screen there. So I just need to make sure that I'm getting that back up to where it needs to be so that I can keep track of some of those questions as well. All right, let's move on. So here we go. Section two. Talking about writing cover letters. So we've got our CV, we, we understand the principles now. The cover letter is very similar in terms of principle, really, um, I believe. You know, it, it extends what it is that you're telling the recruiter or the employer. So a cover letter is going to, we're going to cover this in a templated approach again to give you the key areas that you need to address. You know, I'll say it again tailor this for every job you go for because again this is an extension of the story an extension of the explanation that you're giving to the employer and it often is used by the employer to check that you've actually read and understood the job description in itself so let's have a look at what this means now we're going back to showcasing our skills and experience there. So 40% of recruiters say they look for a cover letter on applications. 45% of recruiters say that a lack of a cover letter will result in rejected CVs. Those figures are just going to go up and up and up because not only are recruiters now looking for a cover letter on a lot of applications, but they're also looking at your social media too to get a better feel for you. So that's why it's important to remember your online presence as well. And the great chance to really sell yourself in you know your cover letter is going to support your cv and it might well give extra highlighting to you showcasing your skills and experience that we've already outlined so see them as very complementary documents the cover letter is often you know up to a page long and it just helps people to understand it's one of those things again helping get through the door why did you apply for the role let us know what does the role apply for you you know give us an outline of why you feel that you're the ideal candidate for a role are often questions that come up in relation to things like cover letters so we're going to build um, a cover letter now with you and we're going to give you some crucial things to include again it's that blank piece of paper syndrome that i was referring to so we need to first have a greeting like we do with not with people in the street and people we talk to we're going to have a greeting we need to introduce ourselves with an introduction we need to again have another summary we need to be able to show the problem versus solution now what that means is that you are going to show how you are the solution to the hiring company's problems it could be just that they need to hire someone because they've expanded but ultimately you are going to be the solution to their challenge 
It's a great way to think about it. I'm going to go into that role. I'm going to help them to fulfill their remit as a company. Now, you can think about your relative, relevant achievements. Again, humanize yourself, uh, make people understand the real you. And then, of course, we're going to sign off appropriately as well, which is quite key. So we're going to address ourselves and we're going to introduce ourselves. We're going to say who we are. Um, so I'm Glenn. Um, I'm really interested in applying for your role in whatever position that is this afternoon. Think about, do you put hi, which is quite informal? Would you put hello? It's friendly and not yet too old fashioned, really. Or dear, which is the classic. It could be dear um, HR department or dear hiring manager. If you're not sure, then again, you could put for the attention of the hiring manager, maybe. You know, if you know the name of the person that you're actually applying to, then include their name. You know, that would be really useful too. build a strong introduction. So who you are, what skills and expertise you have, why you're a good candidate for the job, what job it is that you're applying for, and maybe where you heard about it too, so that they know, oh, we got a really great candidate through um, the other day, and they saw that online, or they saw that in a newspaper. Let people know that their marketing efforts are actually working. So summarizing ourself is about selling in you and your strengths again. You know, take the time to make a list perhaps of your strong points, your achievements, where other people have been grateful for the things that you've done, what's important to you and what you enjoy. Bundle that up into a couple of short sentences. If you find people struggling, um, reassure participants that it's hard to sell yourself. Um, and when you're struggling, again, go back to asking a friend. Uh, they might well find it easier to help you to describe yourself as well. So those are really key points. What's important to you? What you're good at? All of these things just need to be tied in as to why they're relevant to the role. It's you know writing a story. If you remember back to the definition of a CV, it's the course of your life. And um, you want all of your points to come to life and for people to understand what's important to you and why they're important to you as well. Now, as we mentioned before, you need to be the, uh, or you're gonna be, the solution to the organization's problem. So how do you do that? You read the job description to understand fully what it is that they need from the ideal candidate. You look at the language used, how they've presented um, the key points on the job description. Do some company research. You know, most companies are gonna have websites, they're gonna have a social media presence, they could be on LinkedIn. Look them up, understand what they do, understand what they're about, understand what's important to that company, because then you can start to feel if that organization is also gonna be right for you too. We wanna to be happy in the work we're applying for. So it, you have to match yourself to that organization as well. You could also, based on the type of industry you're applying to, look at any news and challenges or changes or updates or developments in that industry to show you're current, to show that you're keeping track uh, and on trend with that type of role. And then you can look at um, the work and personal skills that you need to employ to get you that job too. Again, that could be customer service, that could be good communication, you could be a good leader, you could be good at organizing people. What does that company want? How are you the solution to their problem? Which is essentially, we need to hire someone. Now, this is an optional that we're including, but any relevant achievements that you've got that you feel would fit into the needs of the role. So again, we have those certificates. You might be a volunteer. You might have some great achievements. You might speak relevant languages. Maybe the company you're applying for has an international arm and you might be able to help out with some translation or even cover for someone who's working on an international desk. Uh, you could have the relevant skills, uh, the hobbies and interests that you can list that have those transferable elements and perhaps any links to your website or any online presence, any positive online presence that you have that you feel would be beneficial. Um, I link my LinkedIn profile on my CV so that people can go in and see what I've done. I've got some recommendations on there, some sort of skill recommendations, that sort of thing. And it's great for people to see. It's almost like when you look at feedback, if you go on to an e-commerce site or a retailer and they've said they've had a great experience, start to build up that background of information and it can really help you to get the jobs that you're after. Now, an example sign off, that last part is really, really key too. Nice example on the screen. Um, I'm really honored to be considered for this position. 
I look forward to hearing from you and please let me know if you would like any more information about me, many thanks. So that's really friendly. It shows that you are very, very keen to get the role that you're after. It also starts to build a relationship with the recruiter. I look forward to hearing from you. Please get in touch because I am the person that you want for this role. And again, if I've left out any key information, just contact me on my contact details on my CV and ask me for those. So it's a great sign off, a friendly sign off, a constructive sign off. As we've mentioned, do tailor your application to the role. I've I think I've hammered this home quite a bit. Make sure that you are looking at the job description and you are putting the right skills accumulated from your previous experience onto that CV for that particular role. So any portfolio items that you have, uh, any skills that you have, any qualifications that you have that are relevant. You know, it's really, really important, this tailoring element, um, and it can get you, it gives you a better chance of being included in that 2% of interviewees. Think about that. 2% of people who apply for a role get through to an interview stage. So maximize your opportunity to get there. So when we get back to the cover letter, we want to start strong. So we've got dear Mrs. Webb. They obviously know who they're applying to. Uh, I'm a customer assistant. You're letting people know that you're currently employed, uh, in, perhaps in a similar type role you'd like to apply for. So this is what we're going for. I heard about the job. So again, giving the recruiter or the employer that seamless way to understand who you are, what you've been doing, and where you've heard about the role that you've been applying for. You summarize yourself. Now, this could be quite useful. And again, take notes on these screens. Revisit the webinar. It's going to be up on the link you came in on for the next 24 hours. And have, perhaps have a look at some of these areas again. Obviously, with a replay, you're going to be able to pause. Uh, I would describe myself as friendly, helpful, and patient. Great for customer service there. I've been praised for the warm manner in which I deal with customers. So you're helping to build a picture of yourself for the recruiter and showing that you are indeed a great candidate for this job. The problem versus solution element, I think I'd be a great fit for the role because I pride myself to cope while under stress. And a lot of roles are quite pressured now, very busy, lots of things to do. I've also worked part time while studying and I'm used to dealing with a range of customers on a daily basis. I'm good with people. I'm good with a busy environment and I'm good at kind of multitasking and getting the job done. So that's a really nice uh, ability uh, sell there. So you've shown what you are, who you are. You've shown how you are the solution to the problem that the or the challenge uh, that the hiring company has. Showcase your achievements. So these are the things that I like doing. I like volunteering in the uh, youth group in my village where I organize activities for the group. See how that could be a great uh, translatable piece of experience. I'm taking a short part-time course on counseling as I love learning about the human mind and improving my listening skills. So not only am I working with people, but I'm also trying to learn more about people to be better, even better with them. I'm really honored to be considered for this position. Thank you for taking the time to read my application. Recruiters and hiring managers are really, really busy people. So as I say, take some notes, take some screenshots, take a photo of the screen if you need to in terms of these, or just revisit the webinar later uh, in order to start to think how you can structure the best cover letter for you. Now we're gonna move into the second pause for questions. I'm just gonna have a quick look there to see what's come in. Okay. So what we've got, okay, thank you very much indeed. Got questions from Sathak Gupta. Is it appropriate to use Deer because um, the recruiter would be meeting for the first time? Uh, Deer, I mean, that's a, a very strong UK thing, I think, where we, if we're not sure about who we're talking to or who we're addressing to, we want to come across as being friendly and engaging. So it's, it's a common opening phrase for a letter uh, and it's well understood so that could be something that could be quite useful to you and again it comes down to you your style and it also comes down to perhaps the type of role that you're applying for whether you're applying straight the way through to a line manager or through an hr department or through a recruitment agency so tailor that um, specifically based on the information that you have to hand uh, and another question, if I'm in a college placement, then how should I fill the problem versus solution uh, piece? OK, well, again, you're working towards things. If you are in a college placement, think about the qualifications that you're taking and think about the things that you're doing that once you have become qualified or once you've finished that college placement are going to be beneficial to the employer. It's, it's really not overthinking 
about the level of achievements perhaps in, in some cases that you have it is just saying i'm working towards this my skill set includes and i can see from your job description that some of the things that i enjoy doing some of the things that i'm really good at doing are going to be really beneficial to you and your company you know everyone needs to get their first role or take themselves a step up the ladder so it's really showing your enthusiasm your passion for the type of role that you're going for your understanding so again that research for the industry to show that you're trying to keep yourself as up to date and as current as you possibly can so i hope that helps give you a bit of food for thought and how you can uh, best impress the employer uh, when sending these documents through you know be authentic and just show yeah i'm really really keen i can be really really good for you because and then it, it does come down to that selling yourself once more Okay, now I'm just getting conscious of the time. We have 10 minutes to go. Um, we are just going to move into part three. And that was how to get ready for your job search. So we need to understand what opportunities are out there and how these will match with our values and career goals. Don't forget, we're a really important part of this jigsaw. It's not just what can I do for the employer, but it's also what can the employer do for me? It's really, really important to have that balancing element because you want to work for an employer that is going to inspire you in some way too. So check your digital footprint. As I mentioned, uh, employers, recruiters are all looking at your social media. You have to think about whether you want private profiles or public profiles. Maybe you want to keep your personal profiles uh, very, very private and maybe create profiles that um, reflect your job search or information that could go towards that. You know, if, if recruiters or employers are looking at your social media, for example, and you've been tagged in a photo where you're doing something that you wouldn't want a recruiter to see, you have to think about how you can ensure your presence is constructive. Now you can use a tool such as um, Google Alerts, put your name into Google, um, and search, do a search on yourself, you'll see what comes up. But you can also have Google Alerts so that if something comes up online about you, you get an email about it. Think about the pages that you're following. And as I've mentioned, think about the posts that you're tagged in and think about the content that you share. Are you gonna be happy that people such as recruiters are gonna see those um, particular posts? And if not, then you need to find a way to make those private for you. Now, that's really, really important. As we say, 90% of recruiters are going to check your social media. That's going to be everyone pretty soon, my guess, my estimation. Why not? It gets to know the kind of more real you on a daily basis. So why wouldn't recruiters do that? Um, it's really important because after employee referrals and company websites, social media is the most important recruiting tool. A lot. And again, if you're doing a job search, look on social media because perhaps the company that you're applying to has got roles that are relevant to you via the social media channels and a third of employers use social media to find those new recruits so again it's not just job sites now it's not just newspapers it's not just trade magazines think about the routes to finding roles now you need to be that personal brand online exactly as i mentioned at the beginning of this session reevaluate your social media do that private or public thing and create yourself a positive online presence do a LinkedIn profile. LinkedIn is a fantastic tool. I use it a lot and it has been very beneficial to me. Join in discussions and network, get involved, show your expertise, show that you are thought provoking and that you can um, really contribute to some of these conversations and share engaging content. Think about what good imagery you can use, what compelling posts that you can share that will get perhaps to be seen by the recruiters that you might be in groups or forums with, Lots of social media channels have groups and forums as well. So you might want to start conversations there to get under the right noses. Now, think big. Just think big. Be positive. This is a good opportunity for you to develop your life and your circumstances. Identify trends that you're looking for um, that might be relevant to your industry, as you've said. You know, Think big, think creative, and research the roles and requirements. Look at competitors to the companies that you're actually applying to and for. That could be important as well. Give yourself a real feel for the industry, for the sector, and to show that you've you've done your research. Recruiters, and again, I speak from experience, love it when you can perhaps give them an insight that they that only came out that day, that week. 
it shows that you're being relevant, it shows that you're being current, and it shows that you're being up to date. Attend talks, go to networking events, attend conferences, do everything that you possibly can to give yourself a strong chance. Now, the tools that you can use for to find jobs are search engines. Just again, Google's a great example here. Type in a job role and you'll get the Google search site come up, um, the job the job site rather, uh, which will have lots of roles with lots of filters where you can start to filter by location, by role, by salary, uh, by required skills, all sorts of things. Have a look at that. Job boards, job boards are great. Uh, again, just go to your search engine and type in uh, jobs, job boards, recruitment, and you will get so many results come up that will again help you to work through roles relevant to you there uh, again lots of filtering that's available on professional networks um i mentioned linkedin again because once you start to build your profile and start to get some recommendations and start to populate then you will get if you put yourself as available for work you will start to um after some time perhaps get approaches, it has happened. Um, I've been approached for a couple of roles on LinkedIn because I've kept my profile up to date. So keeping yourself up to date is great too. So there's your picture, discover jobs on search, category, job title, date posted, sector, company type, a really great way to find and to get alerts for jobs very, very quickly. Keep an eye out for key information. Think about again, when you're searching for jobs online, what the daily tasks and responsibilities are, apply for jobs that obviously fit and work for you. Think about the specific skills or experience required for the role. Maybe you might need to take another course, but you can work towards that. Maybe you can um, let the employer know with your transferable skills, you're part of the way there and um, you're doing a course too that's going to get you all of the way there and would they be able to work with you on that basis? You know, personal development, again, I'm doing courses, I'm learning more, um, I'm attending conferences, help me to do that. A lot of employers love to develop staff internally and think about the salary and location, which is important too. You know, you need to be able to live um, and again, location, think about how long it's gonna take you to get to work, making sure that you're able to be on time as much as possible, that perhaps the transport costs are within your means, or given how things have been since lockdown, you know, is it a hybrid role where you can work at home part of the time and then work in the office other parts of the time? These can all be talking points, perhaps, in your interview and in your application as well. So choose roles that match your values. Again, what's important to you? That's really important. What are your values? You want organisations that will in some way match your values. Think about the ones that are most important to you. That's why going onto a company's website, looking at their mission statement, are they sustainable? Are they working towards you know, saving the planet and um, building really sustainable goals and targets over time, as all businesses now need to do? How can you find a job that fits with your values? You know, Try and do that matching, try and find out jobs which uh, are really, really, that have really, really strong values attached to them. There are lots and lots of companies. They're all outlining their mission, their corporate social responsibility. Corporate social responsibility is something, again, that you can look up and, and understand in terms of what companies need to give back to us and to the communities now. Create your plan for success. So build yourself some goals. So a great example there. We want to be specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. That great smart goal uh, ethic that we have. I want to work as a finance manager. I'll have achieved this when I receive a job offer. I'm currently working as a finance intern. I have the knowledge and skills required. I want to have achieved this goal in two years' time. So again, that's another great screen to take um, note of or revisit again to look at and start to build yourself some goals. Start to build your own plan for success. You know, a goal is a goal without a deadline is simply a dream. So set yourself some goals, some goals with deadlines. Review how you're getting on. Think, have I taken that course I needed to take? Have I done the research I've needed to take? Am I really giving this the time and attention that I need to? And that will move you more quickly towards your goals. So what are your career goals for the next year? Please do let us know. I'm just going to jump into the final boards for questions while we've got a couple of minutes left to go. Do let us know in chat uh, what you're thinking. No. I can see that Snap has done an amazingly good job in uh, chat this afternoon. You've been keeping her really, really busy. Thank you very much indeed for that. And uh, thank you to Samantha. So no more questions. That's um, ideal given that we've got about a minute left. So when you're looking at your next steps, 
then think about everything we've been talking about. Get those blank pieces of paper or your blank document up on your screen. Do some research, look at CV tips, revisit this webinar, think about your skills and strengths, talk to people that know you well, that can help you to identify the skills and strengths that you have, all of the positive attributes that you have that you might well overlook um, or you might want some confirmation on. Start to make applying for a job, building a CV a real mission for you make it important and understand that the better you can tailor a CV for the particular role that you're applying for, the more likely you're going to be to be one of those 2% of people that get invited for interview. Now, we're talking about qualifications, so let's get back into that. These career certificates that I mentioned, you know, these are flexible online training programs, IT support, project management, data analytics, UX design, and uh, digital marketing. See if you're eligible, go to gwo.gle forward slash career cert UK uh, and get started on that. That could help you get that next great role. And it leaves me to say, it's bang on time there. Thank you very much indeed. Please leave us some feedback this afternoon at gwo.gle forward slash digital garage feedback. And again, Samantha will leave you a link in the chat to do that. Hope you've enjoyed the session. Hope you found it beneficial. Remember the Google Digital Garage website again for more learning attend more webinars, build up your skills, your understanding, get online, join in conversations. And I hope to see you again very, very soon on another Google Digital Garage webinar. So thanks very much and have a fantastic evening. See you later. Goodbye.